name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles But to those whom God has called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. The word of our God. The cross is foolish in and of itself. It is foolish to display on top of our churches It is foolish to display on the walls of our homes. It is foolish to wear around our necks. The cross is powerless in and of itself. It is powerless to forgive our sins, powerless to give us life, powerless to give us joy and comfort. For think of what the cross is. The cross is a couple of pieces of wood joined together. That's it. It's just a couple of pieces of wood joined together. And while wood from a tree can be used to build a home and other wood from the same tree can be used to burn a fire, still other wood from that very same tree can be used to form a cross. A cross that isn't used for a nice purpose either, but a cross that is used to torture people, to inflict pain upon people, and finally execute people. And so it is foolish to publicly display a cross in and of itself since a cross is merely an instrument of torture. And the cross is powerless in and of itself, since the cross is just a couple of pieces of wood joined together. And so why then do we display crosses all over our church and all over our homes and wear them around our necks? Why do we even have a day in the church calendar entitled the Holy Cross? Well, it's not because of the cross in and of itself. Instead, It's because of who is hanging on that cross. For as Paul so beautifully proclaimed in our reading, we preach Christ crucified. We don't preach about a couple of pieces of wood joined together, but we preach about the Christ who is hanging on those pieces of wood, bleeding, suffering, and dying. That's the message of the cross that Paul so beautifully proclaimed to the Corinthians, and that's the message of the cross that we so beautifully proclaim today. For the message that the Christ, who is the eternal Son of God, is hanging on that cross. The message that the Christ, who fulfilled every law of God perfectly, never sinning once, is hanging on the cross. The message that the Christ, who has holy and precious blood, is hanging on the cross. That message of the Christ, that's the message that forgives our sins. That's the message that works faith in our hearts. That's the message that gives us life and gives us joy and comfort because that's the message that proclaims the one and only way to salvation. For on the cross, the Christ is making full atonement for all of our sins. And since the Christ has made full atonement for our sins by bleeding, suffering, and dying on that cross, we can now be reconciled to the Father, declared holy, and made worthy enough to enter heaven. That's what happened as the Christ hung on that holy cross, bleeding, suffering, and dying. He opened up heaven for all who believe in him. And so what wisdom and power we display by hanging crosses in our church and in our homes and wearing them around our necks, not because of the cross in and of itself, but because of who is hanging on that cross, the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. For since the Christ is hanging on the cross, since the Christ is bleeding, suffering, and dying, we 
No longer look to the cross as a foolish, powerless instrument designed to torture people. Instead, when we see the cross, specifically Christ hanging on that cross, we see the wisdom and power of God, wisdom and power that proclaims to us the one and only way to salvation. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for hanging on that cross, bleeding, suffering, and dying for my sins. May the message of your crucifixion fill my heart with comfort and joy as it proclaims to me the one and only way to salvation. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.